In this video, I want to show you how to create this insane background replacement effect in Final Cut Pro 10. The only thing you need is your footage to be filmed on a tripod with a clear subject. In this case, we have this really cool Rolls Royce. So the first shot we're going to be using is this shot here. So this one is actually part of this. So I'm going to split this press command B or press the B tool to use the blade tool and just make her cut there. And then the other shot is just this one here of the following shot, I guess. So we're going to be exporting this frame. So in order to do that, just go to the top go to file and then you're gonna go down to share and then you're gonna go to save current frame and if you don't have that just go to add destination and then you're gonna go over to the destinations folder go to add destination and add the save current frame to the list of destinations and then you can go back to file and then go to the share just make sure in the timeline and just go to file share and then go down to save current frame this will allow you to save that frame that you're on in the timeline to a image so just go over to settings make sure export is on J JPEG image. TIFF does retain the image quality a little bit better. So we're going to stick with TIFF just to see what it looks like. So we're going to go over to info, give the title a name. I'm going to name this still frame one. And then we're going to open up a photo imaging application that has the AI ability of removing or changing the background. I'm going to be using Photoshop with the generative AI feature. Go ahead and open up Photoshop if you have it. If you don't have this, you can skip this step and go to any other application that you want to use. Once you have your image opened in Photoshop, what I'm going to use is the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool. You can press M on the keyboard to go to that tool. And what you're going to do is you're going to select your subject that you want to remove. In this case, we're going to be removing this Rolls Royce. So you can just click and drag to make your selection. Or if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can use the lasso tool or press L. And then you can click and drag and kind of almost drag around the area that you want to remove. So I'm going to do something like this. Just make sure you include the entire subject, including the shadows, if you can. This just makes it so it looks better. Um, if there's people in here, you want to also get rid of them as well. I'm first going to remove the subjects from our image. So I'm going to right click in that selection. I'm going to go over to generative fill. So click on this generative fill button and a new window will appear. It will ask if you want to give it a, a prompt. Just skip this and click on generate and this will just remove whatever you have selected in your image. So you can see a before and after it just completely removes the subject from our image, which is what you want. You can kind of skim through and see which one you like the best. I think this one is the best in my opinion. So I'm going to press command with this layer selected to select both of those. So command click and press command E you can right click and go to merge layers or command E and this will merge it into one single layer like this. Go back to the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool or whatever tool you want to use. I want to get rid of this top half image, but not the uh, road because that's where the car is going to drive on. So I might want to select a little bit more of this holding shift to add to the selection. I might want to remove a little bit of this as well. I don't want to remove too much from this image. So I'm only going to remove up to this point here. So anything below this image will stay and anything in our selection is going to be removed. So I'm going to right click again and go to generative fill and I'm going to type in a prompt this time and you can type in whatever you want to change the scene. In this case, I'm going to type in trees and it's probably not going to be the same exact image that I used in the intro just because it generates a new image every single time you type in a prompt. So I'm just going to type in trees and let's just see what happens. Okay, generate something like that. Maybe I want to do trees side view road. Let's just see what that looks like. Let's see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. I don't know about that one. That one maybe could work. I like this. This could possibly work. So we're going to stick with this one actually and we're going to save this image. So go over to file and go down to export and go to export as and a new window should appear. You're going to have your image selected. Format is going to be I changed it to PNG, but uh, yours is probably on uh, JPEG. So click on JPEG. Quality is set to seven for high. Keep everything the same and click on export. So once you're in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna import that same image. So go to file, go to import and go to media or press command I. So here it is. This is our image, select it and drag it into the timeline. We're gonna drag that underneath our main clip with the car or our subject. So anyways, hold down option and drag upwards to duplicate the clip. With our new clip selected, go over to the effects. And I have a plugin already installed that I love to use and that's the Mroto AI. I've made a whole bunch of videos on this on my channel. If you wanna check them out, link is gonna be in the description. You don't have to use this. This is completely optional. Let me show you. So if I drag this directly onto our new clip here, 
we're going to see some tools with the tracker. And the way this works is you go to the beginning of your clip here and you would do the same exact thing if you were going to use the draw mask. OK, except in this case, it's a little bit different. So we're just going to go over to the inspector window and you're going to have the motion VFX plugin. And the way this works is you have this kind of a tool here. You can kind of see it on the on screen control. You paint over the area that you want to mask out. So anything in blue is what's going to be masked out. You do want to select the shadows underneath the car. So it makes it look a little bit more realistic. So it did this instantly without you having to go manually one by one. I think that just takes forever. Output is right now set to merge, which is what you want. Precision, I'm going to go with accurate in this case. It will clear the path, so you're going to have to do this one more time. And that looks good. So now once you have your precision selected, I'm going to do accurate just because it has some shadows in there and I want it to look pretty good. I'm going to go over to smoothness and I'm going to increase this. These tools actually are for after you've tracked it. So we're going to go over to the tracker and we're going to track forwards in time because none of this has been tracked. So click the track forwards button and a new window will appear. You're going to see it's being tracked in real time. I'm not speeding this up at all. And you're seeing how good of a selection it's doing and it saves you a significant amount of time. So, you know, if you want to try it out, you can, but this is totally optional. So anyways, you can see it did a really good selection of our car and the shadows. So now we're going to change the output from merge to masked video. I'm going to actually hide this clip so we can see it underneath our new clip so you can kind of see what it looks like now. That looks incredible. So now we're going to further enhance our mask. So go over to the smoothness slider and increase that. So it's kind of softens the edge of our selection a little bit. You know, the shrink and expand allows you to shrink the mask inwards or expand it outwards. I like to increase the blur, which is pretty much the feather, and then maybe kind of tweak the shrink and expand slider just a hair and we want to make sure anti-alias is checked this just makes it so it's nice and soft of an edge so now if i go back and i push play it looks just like this now we want to make that slide or that transition for that to work we're going to go over to the beginning here go to the effects and then we're going to go down to the masks and key and we're going to add the shape mask onto the middle clip here we're going to go and zoom out to 50 percent so we can see the entire frame i'm going to use these green circles on either end to extend the mask so that it's completely covering video and if we use this centerpiece and we drag it down we want to make the feather a little bit less so it's a little bit more dramatic of an effect and then just move it back over like this so that this is covered hold shift at the beginning of this clip and press the right arrow to go 10 frames inwards and then add the keyframe under position that's our first starting point and then we're going to go all the way to the end and go one frame to the left and then i'm going to go and just drag this all the way down so now it's going to almost disappear so if i play it through it looks just like that super smooth as you can see and then to add the fake movement that you guys saw in the beginning of the video you can do that by again going to the motion vfx website and getting the m music video 2 plugin handheld effect you could add the handheld effect to the clips once you group them all together and if you guys want a video on this specific plugin i'd be more than happy to make a video on it but here's what it would look like with the handheld effect it just makes it more dynamic and more interesting of an effect. I highly recommend you do add some type of movement to this afterwards so that it looks like this. And then last but not least, we want to add some type of transition between this point and here. So what you can do is go over to the link in the description again where you can find my editing packs. I have a free version, a free sample pack of this one if you want to try it out for your clips. But we're going to be using the Luma swipe transition. It's pretty much a transparent video that you overlay onto your footage. So here's the first one. It's the Luma swipe transition 4. And then here's the second one, number 15. It looks like that. So we're going to be adding this one to the beginning okay you just literally drag it into your timeline and you're done and then you have this other one where you just drag it to the end and that's it you just gotta of course depending on your frame size you might need to crop this as you can see so you select your clip go to the crop tool and just hit crop and this will crop it to your settings in your timeline they are in 4k so you're not going to lose uh, any quality so go to crop and just crop it to that and you're done so now you can go back and push play and now you have a better way better transition of an effect that you can add to your music videos. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below and uh, I'll catch you on my next video.